Today on Houston Life, how a local teen is delivering boxes of joy and bringing smiles to kids in hospitals here in Houston. And she swapped the drama of reality TV for laugh out loud comedy. Actress and entrepreneur Tammy Roman chats about her new sitcom, The Miss Pat Show, and how her love life moved her right here to Houston. Plus, we are taking you inside the local Airbnb that's been transformed into a designer themed house. Find out how you could enter to win a two-night stay. And speaking of winning, it is time to spin the Houston Life prize wheel from gift cards to a day at a spa, even 1000 bucks. You could be our next big winner. All of that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Friday the 13th, August 13th. I'm Courtney Savala. It is Friday it the is. 13th. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek Short. What do you have up your sleeves for today? I know. I should have planned something a little bit better, but how about this crazy weather? The crazy weather. In fact, uh, I think maybe we're on generator power right now. We were upstairs in our office. The rain is coming down. I don't think we have ever heard thunder this loud inside our building. It's been so crazy. Well, I know. wherever you are, stay safe. Uh, today is also National Prosecco Day. So You're welcome. Maybe <laughs> pop a bottle. Well, maybe wait a couple hours. <laughs> After 5 o'clock, it's a little more acceptable, right? Um, so uh, we got a really fun video from one of our viewers. We sure did. We always love interacting with y'all on Instagram, on TikTok. I don't know how to use it. Uh, but we did get this really fun video from a viewer named Don. Okay, look closely. That is a bunny named Roger Rabbit. And according to the caption on the screen, he loves watching Channel 2 and Houston Life. Keep watching. Wait for it, Courtney. Wait for it. Check this out. Oh my I know. Best seat in the house. Standing up to say hi. Isn't a that little sweet? cutie patootie. We little camera that. shy at first, but then got used to it. I love it. It's so great. So thanks to Don for sending that in for us because it was such a treat to see. We didn't really have pets growing up in the Shore household, right? I had a goldfish here and there. The goldfish thing was heartbreaking. It never worked out. They always ended up floating upside down at the surface. What does that mean? Can anyone tell me? Anyway, um, they would just disappear. But we did have bunnies in the backyard. We actually so had, cute. you know, a, a rabbit pen. And so it's always nice to see our smallest and furriest of fans. Out Absolutely. There. And we are huge fans of our next guest. She's a fierce boxer who fought her way to the Tokyo Olympics and now is being featured in a multi part documentary produced by Oprah Winfrey and Prince Harry. Oh, sounds like a big deal to me. We are so glad to have back on Houston Life, Virginia Ginny Fuchs, <laughs> fresh off her Olympic debut. Ginny, it is so great to see you. Thanks so much for making time for us. It's good to see you guys again. Okay, so let's chat about the experience. I know a lot of people have probably asked about jet lag, but it is sort of on the other side of the planet. So describe your time in Tokyo. Uh, was it everything you hoped for? Uh, well, you know, I was in Tokyo or Japan for 40 days. We went to Maisaki Ju July 1st for a two and a half week camp before heading to the village on July 17th. So wow. it was, you know, a lot of restrictions. Um, when we were at the camp, we had to go a certain walkway to the gym and to the dining hall. And we can only take those certain paths. And it was in a hotel and we couldn't like go explore outside the hotel. So it was kind of, you know, in the room to the dining hall or to the gym. And then when we got to the village, obviously we got to rock around the village and you're surrounded by all the athletes um, around the world. So that was nice. Um, again, because of COVID, you know, usually the village has like restaurants you can go to. They have like entertainment. Um, it's, you know, a lot more lively usually, but because of COVID, nothing was really happening. It was just training, waiting to fight fighting, going to watch your teammates. Um, so in that sense, it was different because I went to Rio. So I got to experience how, you know, real um, Olympics is without COVID. But again, it's the Olympics. So just being there was really, you know, it was honor. Um, 
Absolutely. Uh, and Judy, unfortunately, I, that... I didn't medal, so that that was disappointing. But it just being at the Olympics was was really cool. And that's the thing. I know. I know you didn't you didn't medal, and that's really what you wanted. But let's talk about some of the accolades that you know. In January, you were ranked number three boxer in the world. Of course, you went to Episcopal High School. You're a flyweight boxer. Um, this is something, Jenny, that you've wanted to do ever since you were a little girl. I have to tell you, I took boxing in college from an unbelievable woman, and it was sort of life-changing for me to kind of get that empowerment in the ring. Is that what it was like for you as a little girl? Uh, well, you know, I didn't know I'd be boxing or going to the Olympics for boxing. I started when I was 21 in college. Um, I was introduced to it by a friend who's a professional boxer, but um, so me going, so this is, you know, kind of unexpected and it's kind of surreal, but be, you know, getting into boxing and and getting into it uh, when women were still, you know, looked out upon and, you know, we don't, we're not treated the same as men. Um, it's getting better, but we still have a long way. To, so to be a kind of a pioneer of, of the women's, uh, of boxing and women's is, is really um, something special. And I'm glad I can be a part of that. Um, and I, and I hope to keep, you know, building that equality. Well, Jenny, you're such an inspiration to so many of us. You are very public about your OCD diagnosis, which came when you were in middle school. This documentary Courtney just mentioned, The Me You Can't See, produced by Oprah Winfrey and Prince Harry. This really features stories addressing mental health and emotional well-being. What has been the response uh, from, from viewers? Oh, um, a lot of positivity. Um, a lot of people have reached out and, you know, telling me, like, I relate to so much of what you suffer with. Thank you for, you know, being open and honest. I don't feel alone. Now I feel like I can go get help. And, you know, I never really looked at my OCD as something I could do positive with it. And so, um, you know, I would thank Oprah and Prince Harry for allowing me to be on this documentary and, and showing people exactly, you know, the the struggles and severity of OCD. So I'm I'm just glad that I can help people any in any kind of way, whether they're just letting them know, letting them know they're not alone, or letting them know like you can get help, and letting them know even with this severe um, you know disorder, I can still you know, live my dreams and go to and compete in the Olympics. I think it's great, Jenny, that you're able to tell your story. I know in middle school, when you got the diagnosis, you were being treated for anorexia, found out that the OCD was then the layer beneath that. So there's lots of layers. And I think now as a woman, you're standing here telling your story. There's probably a lot of younger women that can identify and say it's OK to talk about. There's been such a stigma about it. We're so proud of you and, and can't thank you enough for joining us today. Uh, can we plan for, to see you in the next Summer Games? Uh, well, I I haven't decided yet my future plans. I'm going to sit down with my team. I'm not sure. I'm kind of looking at whether I should go pro, pro or not. Um, but again, it killed me that I didn't get the gold medal, and I really want to get a gold medal. So um, I'm not sure, but I will let you guys know after I talk with my team. Absolutely. We're ready to, to broadcast that announcement right here <laughs> yeah. on Houston Life. Jenny, when you're ready. <laughs> okay. And whether it's the Olympics or not, we know we're going to see you back in the ring very soon. Jenny, it's great yes. to see you, and congrats. Welcome home. Thank you, guys. Nice to see you again. You too. Well, The Me You Can't See is streaming now on Apple TV+. Plus. And to connect with Jenny, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. Powerful documentary. Yes, she is such an inspiration. Still to come on Houston Life, okay, brace yourselves. Lickable wallpaper in a hotel? The vacation spot with some pure imagination. Can't wait to hear about that. Plus, Joe Sam is taking us on a fashionable staycation this afternoon. Tell me all about it, Joe. That's right, you guys. We are showing you guys this amazing designer house. It's an Airbnb, but it's all focused on creative space, and it's on wall-to-wall -wall here at the house. We're going to show you all of that when we come back here on Houston Life when we return. Okay, I'm, are you ready to get your mind blown on many facets here? Okay, it is the 50th anniversary of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 
Is that all? 50. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know, right? I Doesn't do it seem like it was film. a little bit longer? Um, it actually debuted, it was August 12th, so it was Violet, yesterday. Your turn but Violet. I, Violet, listen. That movie's a trip. It's a trip, and it's so good. Any age, you can keep watching it. It's so wonderful, of course, the music and all of that. But listen, at the Chocolate Box Hotel in Bournemouth, UK, this is where you can find the Willy Wonka Hotel Room. And the booking site says that the room right. will feature lickable wallpaper with a variety of fruity flavors, a luxurious chocolate fountain with dripping fruit and marshmallows, jars of gobstoppers, gumballs, chocolates, and sweets, complimentary drinks like luxury hot chocolate. Can we just go back to the lickable wallpaper? Wait, so do they replace the wallpaper? They do, I know. Yes. Yes, but I, that's all I thought about was Violet. At, I mean, just licking every wall in the hotel room. Because can you imagine, like, there's a spot on the wall that's just sort of bare? Yes. Because all the guests. It does get this. Lauren's dying. <laughs> <laughs> it does get replaced after each stay, is what we are told. Wait. So for an additional, I'm reading the notes here too. For an additional cost, yes. that chocolate-filled bathtub. Yes. How much additional is it? Why also, chocolate-scented toiletries. <laughs> and the coolest thing, I think, though, the hotel's room key. Is a golden ticket. Oh, that's cool. I know. Here's the thing, though. You know me. I have a thing about being sticky. This sounds like my nightmare. <laughs> like getting in a bathtub of chocolate. Right. I, 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 I'm just getting in with a straw. <laughs> Okay. $277 a night. Uh, let's bring in Lauren <laughs> Kelly. Yeah, Lauren, are you, uh, are you, are you okay? No, oh, I have seven nieces and nephews who I can just picture them licking the wall. I'm like, ew! <laughs> right? And you're like, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> or, well, continue. What, what stop. If what if it's the wall that's not lickable and they're just like licking I know, everything. right? Oh. Then you'd be testing it. Oh, is this lickable too? <laughs> I'm just, I, I don't know. Maybe we should wait until after COVID ends for that. All right. We want to hear from you guys. What is the strangest design feature you've ever seen while traveling? Let's get to some of your responses right now. Wes writes in and says a bathroom addition in a converted attic was fine if you were day five, six or less. But as tall person on the roof peak that I was up against had me constantly bowing or tilting my head in every angle. That does not sound comfortable. Oh, no. Linda writes in and we went to a steakhouse that had a creek running under it and there was a huge rock coming up right in the middle of the dining oh, room. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. That's interesting. interesting. Okay. And Betty writes in a giant boa constrictor in a guest room. I checked into a hotel. Yeah, that would have me out the door pretty darn quick as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> the boa constrictor. Well, <laughs> you guys head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We will take more of your comments a little bit later on in the show. Wow. Okay. We, what, <laughs> once stuck. when we were sh house shopping as kids, we went to a house where like you open the front door and you were in a bedroom. Oh, that's oh. too much it for was me. Like I don't like that. Oh, but the realtor had plenty of it. She was like, oh, but you could put a curtain. It would be fine. Oh, yeah. oh it's put a no. shower curtain. Welcome yeah. to my bed. Anyway, <laughs> Lauren, thank you. It's good to see you. If you are looking to travel a bit closer to home, shifting gears now, how about this? A staycation with a designer theme, Courtney. I like this. This unique short-term rentals each have their own designer flair. Joe Sam is at the designer house with more. This looks fabulous. It really is, Courtney and Derek. We are just relaxing right now, having some fun. There we go. We're trying to learn how to play this here, but we are inside of the designer house right now. We're going to show you the designer that we're talking about in just a bit. You know our executive producer. He knows that I love a different theme, so you can see it right here. I had to put on the Versace cologne today because I can't afford a Versace suit, and that's why we are going to be talking about this here inside of the designer house. Victoria is here with us. What a beautiful space. Talk to us a little bit about the concept and how did you guys discover that you wanted to do these designer homes? Of course. Thank you, Joe. First of all, thank you guys for co uh, coming here. Um, so the d concept of the designs basically came just to make it uh, something that's Instagrammable, fun, family friendly, and to make it something that's still cozy, but fun to basically hang out and, you know, film some content if you needed to. It really is. You can take a look at the chairs here. It has the Versace label on the chairs. It has the Versace label, labels all up on the walls. Each space is decorated really, really fine to what we see in the movies and what we see in the actual label. When we walk into the pool room, there's actual pool room you can come here to. There's a fountain that's going. I love everything that you guys incorporate into it. So we see the pool room as well that people can really let loose and have a good time when they're here in the rental, right? 
Absolutely. Take a look at that symbol on the wall, you guys. You're gonna see it spread out throughout the entire home. Whenever we actually have this into this space, what is it about this space that brings these content creators in to really showcase their social media? Um, I believe it's just the big pizzazz of every room. Every room has a signature space that they can, you know, hone in on and get any kind of um, just great background and great content for their uh, Instagram, social media, any, you know, anything Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. Follow me into here, you guys. We're going to get ready to send things back to you guys. But when we do send it back, this entire space can sleep six different people. So I'm going to get ready to take a load off. You can see we have the sign behind. Say hello to my little friend. I'm going to say hello to my little friend, this bed. And we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio while I go and get a little rest. <laughs> Absolutely. Those Versace pillows. Oh, my word. Thanks, Joe. When we come back, after a tragic loss, how one local family was moved to start a nonprofit to help local children in need. We'll chat with one of the family members who is using her platform as Miss Gulf Coast Teen to raise awareness for their cause. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back. In 2010, two-year-old Harrison Kotari was hospitalized for a congenital brain cyst. After spending three long months in the hospital, Harrison passed away. Somehow, Father Chanoop, his wife Sandy, and his daughter Hannah took their grief and turned it into action, forming Harrison's Heroes, a nonprofit dedicated to comforting children who are enduring long-term hospital stays. Uh, my name is Shanoop Katari, and I'm a co-founder of Harrison's Heroes. My son was in the hospital. He had a surgery, something called an arachnoid cyst, and, and as a result of that, we were in and out of the hospital for about three months. And so, so Harrison was two, and so think about a two-year-old that uh, all of a sudden is now stuck in a hospital room, hospital bed. You know, it was a very challenging to keep him entertained, uh, to keep him active, and um, you know, we really struggled, and we had all hands on deck. No one plans on uh, their child being in the hospital for a very long time. And we were in the hospital for about 90 days, you know, you know, not quite consecutively, but pretty, pretty close to that. Most families can't, can't do that, right? Dual working, they can't take the time off. And, you know, what we noticed was there's a number of kids that were left alone. And so after Harrison passed, um, you know, we reflected and wanted to, um, to provide something back to those, those families and those kids. And that was the catalyst to found uh, Harrison's Heroes, which we, we founded in 2015. It doesn't matter what, what your background is, it doesn't matter where you're from, you know, what's your ethnicity, what means, what, what profession you're in, it's a challenge for everyone. You know, what we've uh, experienced in helping these uh, families and, and children is, is that, um, you know, we, we're touching people in all walks of life. You know, we're touching people of all races, ethnicities, backgrounds, professions, and basically, you know, in some cases from all around the world. You know, the thing about the experience uh, with Harrison was the child and the entire family, the whole network, you know, suffers from that. And so, but what we wanted to do is to provide support for those families. The long-term stays uh, for children in hospitals is really the premise of Harrison's Heroes. Shanoob's daughter and Miss Gulf Coast teen Hannah Koteri joins us now to share how she's using her pageantry platform to continue advocating for Harrison's heroes. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I know it can't be easy seeing the pictures of Harrison, hearing the story, but what an incredible way to honor your brother and to really make sure other kids feel, bring a smile to their face in the yeah. hospital. Yes. I absolutely love bringing smiles to their faces, even though, you know, Harrison is here with us today. I'm still able to bring smiles to maybe not him, but other kids in his honor. And Hannah, you were only seven years old when Harrison was diagnosed. What do you remember about him and specifically about the final months of his life when he spent so much time in the hospital? It was really scary. The whole experience for the whole family and especially for Harrison was just terrifying. I mean, he was my best friend. He was always so joyous, playful, happy to be here. Really, he had no negativity to him. So seeing him in the hospital really, it really hurt, you know, not only for him, but he did remain so strong and I'm so proud of him. And I, I, I use that strength and I channel it into everything that I do today. 
That is really incredible. And, and really, what a great way to honor him and to move forward. And I think there's that connection, too, probably when you're in the hospitals or being able to talk to other families, that they're not alone no. in all of this process, right? Because as you mentioned, it's scary. It is scary. It's terrifying. And people think that, you know, they're alone in this. And by giving the kids a, a fun and different experience, they're able to know that they're not alone and that they are loved and cherished and that what they're going through will be okay. They will, they will come out stronger. I think this is a really cool way to, to keep Harrison's memory alive. I love seeing these photos of you and your team out in the community. I know a lot of people who are involved with Harrison's Heroes. I've been to your events. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your continued mission because reading all the things you're involved in, Hannah's a very busy person. It's a long okay. list. <laughs> so you're a senior at Memorial High School. Yes. School starts on Monday. Monday. So yeah. rest up this weekend. Thank you. Between your blog, your YouTube channel, uh, you've interned at five local publications. I mean, Harrison Hero Harrison's Heroes is really part of your mission as Miss Gulf Coast Teen. Yes. So Harrison's Heroes for me is something that has always been a part of my life. But with the platform that I've been given as Miss Gulf Coast Teen and hopefully Miss Texas Teen, I've been able to talk about it and spread awareness for it on a larger, wider scale and inform more people about the importance of funding child life and just being there for those children. It's really incredible. And uh, by the way, you just plugged it, which I need to ask you about, because when is Miss Texas Teen USA pageant happening? The final show is September 5th, and I am beyond excited and ready to compete. We can't wait to see you. And also, what's what's next for high school? What are you going to be doing? I know you're a volleyball player, so yes. excited to get back on the court. Ex-volleyball player. I would have been on varsity this year, but I've actually taken the time to try to get my pilot's license instead of being on the court. So private pilot's license, that would be great before I graduate. That's definitely my next goal, um, as well as you know college applications, just getting that all in, trying to de-stress with all the APs I'm taking and just finish out senior year on a strong note. Well, volleyball is so last year. Anyway, <laughs> Hannah. Uh, we're out of time, but any final thoughts you have for families who are out there in a scary situation with a sick you know, child or brother, sister? Sure. I mean, honestly, just know that it will be okay. Surround them with the, as much love and support as you possibly can and cherish each, each moment that you have with the child. All right, Hannah Katari, it's great to see you. Say hi to your folks, Shanoop and Sandy, who are here in studio. We appreciate your time, and thanks again for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. For more information on Harrison Heroes, Harrison's Heroes, or to follow Hannah's pageantry journey, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now let's send things over to Lauren for a look at what's coming up. Hi, Lauren. Hey, guys, what a great story. Coming up, whether your child is heading to the classroom or participating in virtual learning from home, or sharing the benefits of getting your child's eyes checked at the beginning of the new school year. Plus, we'll get a check of what is coming up for the news at 4. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Friday. So glad to have you with us at uh, just about 3.30 on the dot. So earlier in today's show, we asked you, what is the strangest thing you have ever discovered while traveling? That could be at your mom's house, in a hotel. You know the drill. Anytime you're on the road, we're going to get to some of your comments <laughs> in just a moment. I think we are finding our way through some technical difficulties, but I believe the first comment comes to us from Lori. And Lori writes in, on a road trip with family as a kid, we stopped in nowhere, Arizona, at a weird roadside attraction. And oh. next we have, um, who's next? Wes? Linda? I think okay, it's Wes. well, head over to our Facebook page where you can see the rest of the comments. It's really good and funny. We're gonna check in now with Chris, Lauren, and Frank for a look at what is coming up in the news at four. You guys, I know it's Friday the 13th, but this thunderstorm. I'm blaming everything on the weather. I no. know, it's crazy. Frank, Frank it is always really gets coming down out there. And it always gets it's, it's, it's always the weather guy. Did you? We, I showed you the traffic. Yeah, uh, yeah. was that Tidwell, North yes. Freeway? Yeah. Look at this at North Freeway at Tidwell. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's been going oh, on for now. Oh, wow. That's not me. 
<laughs> it's your fault, It's Frank. good to point that out, though. <laughs> That's not Frank. I hope everybody's okay, but there's a lot of lights there, and it's really been slow. So if you have anybody coming or going on the North Freeway, be aware of that. Not that I'm the, the traffic guy. I'm not. But <laughs> I, I, know, I know a picture when I see one, right? Right. So there's that. Okay, there's a look uh, across downtown. We've had a few showers. There was a problem in Sugar Land with some heavy rain, but the really cool temperatures. You're at 80 degrees there while 92 at Bush. Here's a look at exact track radar. This clearly is the area that had the big storms coming through. So I'll zip down on that. Aerial flood advisory just because of the rain that fell until 430. But the rain there has diminished. You can see a few showers behind that. This one had a little thunder as it moved toward NRG. And we have a little just south of Hobby. So we'll keep an eye on that. There's some big storms south of Columbus that go off toward Garwood. So those showers continue to move off to the west. Generally speaking, it's fairly quiet. Our relationship with our Harris County Flood Control District shows all of these rain gauges. Look at this. Braves Bayou and Bel Air Boulevard 1.6. At the Beltway 1.3. Six. This was all this afternoon when that storm was happening. One an inch or better at Gessner. I know there was some street flooding there. And then 2.28 at Keegan's Bayou and Work Road. And then over here at Willow Water and lands down 1.24. So it gives you an idea of the one to two inch rain amounts that were fairly common. I'll get a four o'clock update on Fred, Tropical Depression Fred, which is basically right over northern Cuba right now. Uh, it's still forecast to move across the Keys tomorrow morning. 40 mile an hour winds and not really forecast to become a real strong system. Just 40 and 45 mile an hour winds moving in to the Panhandle of Florida and then into the southeast, three to five inches of rain. Speaking of which, watch for that splash forecast. If you're not under those clouds or rain, it's going to be warm, 98, 95, 94. But as we say, when thunder roars, get indoors. And every afternoon, thunder's been roaring, so be no careful. Uh, Anna Vid Reyes called and said something about keeping your day job. <laughs> oh, thank goodness she did. And she needs to keep her job because I don't want her job. There you go. She does a great job. And Traffic I don't know how she and weather together. It. I don't know how she keeps up with all that. I hear you. Thank Great. You, it's a big city. All right, Frank, thank you. Here's a look at some of the stories we're working on for our 4 o'clock newscast this afternoon. Do you need a third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine? Some federal agencies are saying yes. We will take a look at the recommendation and who would qualify. Plus, mask mandates in your child's school. How local school districts are handling those mandates and what they're requiring as students head back to class. And the need for bilingual teachers as the school year begins in our Stronger Houston series. We look at the impact that these teachers make and the incentives that some districts are using to recoup these teachers. Hmm. Very and interesting more. stuff. Coming up at okay. 4 o'clock. Sounds good, guys. When thunder roars, stay indoors. Don't be a fool. Get out of the pool. Oh, that's right. Something tells me you have a long list of those, right, Frank? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're going to take a turn now to vision and the school year. So vision is, of course, a key component in learning. And that's why back-to-school vision exams, they are so, so critical for kids. Absolutely. By making sure your child is seeing the best they can, can, you can ensure there are no learning barriers from a vision perspective. Lauren Kelly joins us now with more on the importance of back to school vision exams. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys. The new school year is upon us, and it's important not to forget to check off eye exams from your children's back to school checklist. The specialist at Houston Eye Professionals can help ensure they start off their year in their best overall health. You can find one of their many locations conveniently located inside the Galleria next to Nordstrom. So today, Dr. Kaylee Young is getting us some great information on the importance of eye health in children. And I know this is a big concern, of course, when it comes to back to school. When it comes to those back to school vision exams, what are the benefits in getting your children checked before school starts? Right, so vision is a key development in learning. So seeing the board, reading, very, very important. So uncorrected vision issues can be an unnecessary burden on a child that's already taking on a lot, learning new skills, gaining new knowledge. So if you can ensure that your child is seeing the best possible, you can avoid any unnecessary roadblocks. Uh, when it it's comes one to of those learning. things where if you're not paying attention, if you yes. can't see the board, you're not going to pay attention to the teacher. Exactly. Right? Yes. So it's just very beneficial to yes. go ahead and do that. Now, what age should parents get their eyes checked in their children? Right. So a lot of parents don't know this, but the American Optometric Association actually recommends your child get their eyes examined at six months, three years, and six years of age. Young. young. Six months. Very young. young. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, 
the reason for this, the reason why it's so important is because the connection between the eyes and the brain is developing the most in our early years. So if you can get your child in before they start school, that's highly recommended. Now, are children supposed to have their eyes checked once a year? What is yes. the time, the duration? Right, so right at six years, that would be um, when you start doing the annual checkups. So just like your child's body is going to develop, the eyes will develop as well. So the vision can change drastically. Now, the year. you mentioned the six-year-old, the seven-year-old. We're talking yes. prime time iPad yes. ages here, right? Yes. A yep. lot of parents are concerned. Their kids are staring a lot more at the computer screens, at the iPad. Is this something right. that we really need to worry about? Absolutely, yes. So studies show that the more that you spend on the phone, on the tablet, any kind of near work, and the less time outdoors, the higher the chance is of having distance vision issues. So very important we go outside and play. With <laughs> online learning, I would assume that it's just additional to have your kid go outside and take Absolutely. a break from the screen yes. just to kind of break it apart. You right? got it. Yes. Okay, so now your child may experience things that will let you know they need to see an eye doctor. What kinds of things? Headaches? Yes, absolutely. Headaches, if they're sitting closer to the TV, um, if you're noticing they're not taking as much notes in class, they might not be able to see the board. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Young, thank you so much for the information today. It really is wonderful to learn all of these things. If you guys need more information on Houston Eye Professionals and their eye health and children, just give them a call at 713-963-0021 or find them online at HoustonEyePro.com. Houston Eye Professionals has six convenient locations throughout the Houston area, including the Galleria, Sugarland, Willowbrook, Katy, the Woodlands, and Baybrook Mall. Now back over to you guys. It's a good reminder for all of us. I need to get mine too. Absolutely. Lauren, thanks so much. Well, coming up, she's a pioneer of reality television who happens to call H-Town home. Look how beautiful she is. We are getting real with actress Tammy Roman and learning more about her groundbreaking new sitcom, The Miss Pat Show. That's when Houston Life returns. Don't go away. job that requires no resume. Would you just shut up and look? Denise, how did you go to Hillman? It's not even a real college. <laughs> it's an honorary degree. Well, that was Tammy Roman in the new BET Plus comedy, The Miss Pat Show, a sitcom highlighting the comedic chops of the veteran reality TV star known for her unapologetic candor. I love her. And the Houston-based actress, producer, and entrepreneur is joining us now to tell us why she is truly in the best moment of her career. Tammy, welcome to Houston Live. <laughs> Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. This is so great. I mean, your resume, I mean, it goes on and on and on, but let's just take a moment. I do want to talk about the new show, Miss Pat, because it looks super funny. I love the role that you're in, but let's bring it back to where it all started in 1993, girl. Can you believe yes. it was that long ago that you were on The Real World? Yes, my <laughs> lower back tells me every day. <laughs> So, yeah, but 1993, um, you know, it started it all. I had no idea that I would even roll into the entertainment industry in this capacity, and it basically catapulted me into uh, scripted programming and, and television work. And what's interesting, too, about this, this era, 1993, I mean, you were on reality TV before people even knew what reality TV was. Yeah. And so I feel like now there are so many reality shows, it's really saturated. You always considered yourself, though, Tammy, an actress first and foremost. Is that right? Yes. Absolutely. I was trying to have a singing group. I was trying to model, but I knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I just didn't have a platform. And so once Real World came out, people thought we were actors because there was nothing called reality TV. So I started getting auditions and then the rest is history, as they say. It's really incredible when you think about where it, it all has been, right, with reality TV, where we are today. But here you are, you say, in the best role, the best moment yeah. of your life. And why do you think that this is your moment right now? You know, quite honestly, I've been in the business for about 23 years. And this is one of the first roles that I feel is very close to me. 
you know, with it being scripted and not me doing, you know, reality TV. This role is allowing me to be funny. It's allowing me to be creative. It's allowing me to talk how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't have to do much when I, I show up to work. I just need to know the lines, but I feel the character, the essence of the character is me. Let's chat about Truth Be Told. So you have a recurring role yeah. on Reese Witherspoon's uh, Apple TV Plus series. Yeah. And the second season is actually coming up. It's right around the corner, premiering August 20th. August 20th, yes. Uh, I was so taken. Let me, t let, me got, let me tell you guys something. Octavia Spencer is the star of this show. Mm. And the first time that I met her, we had a table read. And I walked up and I said, hi, Mrs. Spencer. My name is Tammy. And she was looking at her script. And she never looked up. And she said, it's Octavia and never made eye contact with me. And I said, this woman does not like me. I'm gonna have to get in here and show and prove. And so the first day on the set, when we actually were doing the scene work, after we were done, she came over and she said, you can act. I like you. And we've been cool ever since. But, you know, it's always it's always a blessing when you can be in the space with the craft of acting, with people of that magnitude. I've been trying to, you know, I've worked with Halle Berry. I've worked with Monique, several other Oscar winners. And now I can add Octavia Spencer. And so when you surround yourself with greatness, eventually, eventually, Tammy's going to get an Oscar. <laughs> I'm going to get an Emmy or something. Well, and we're, you better share that Oscar with us. Us. We want to have you back on Houston Live yes, when that yes. happens. Um, let's also talk about your move to Houston because um, love brought you here, right? Well, actually, my mom passed in 2013 and I was living in California and everywhere I looked, I just felt like I had so many memories and I just couldn't take it. And so I had an appearance in Houston and I came down and fell in love with the city. And then uh, so I moved. I just picked up and moved. I moved my two daughters and, and we just hit the, hit the ground running to Houston. And about two years after that, I met my husband at Papa Do's. <laughs> I was, you know, having lunch there and... Uh, he walked in and couldn't find a seat and I asked him, hey, you want to come sit with me? And then we've been inseparable ever since. <laughs> well, the love story is fantastic. It's great to watch your career thriving. Tammy, it's great Thank to see you. you. Truth Be Told on Apple TV Plus. Yes, and the August Pat 20th. Show, now streaming on BET Plus. Come back and yes. see us. Uh, even before you get the Oscar, you're always welcome here at Houston Life. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> great to see you. And a reminder, My the Houston Pat family. Show. <laughs> now streaming on BET+. Plus. All right, and to keep up with Tammy and all her projects, we have shared a link on the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Great catch up. I love that she's here and hearing all about her career, too. It's fantastic. Well, you don't have to travel far to find unique spaces. Joe Sam is showing us how a group of local creators are combining luxury, fun, and out-of-the-box design with a thematic aesthetic. Hey, Joe. Hey, you guys. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just grabbing me a glass of bubbly. We've been having so much fun here in the designer house. I had to put on my Versace robe. We're going to be heading downstairs into the master bedroom to take a load off, and I'll show you what else you can check out here at the designer house and how you can win a stay here for yourself. Houston Life returns in just a bit. So get, let's get ready to go ahead and walk downstairs when we tell you guys all about this designer space. When we walked through, we showed you guys earlier the actual pool room. We showed you the entire living area. We have Victoria here with us to talk a little bit more, not only about the spaces that we have here, but you have so many other homes that are themed out yeah. when we talk about the dollhouse. Let's talk about that space too. And we have some photos to show people of that unique space for all of those content creators too. Yes, yeah, so the dollhouse is actually located in the medical center we are located here right now in Montrose. Um, you can find these locations on Airbnb and VRBO. And sorry, what was your question? And that's <laughs> that's exactly what we wanted to make sure yeah, we okay. mentioned all of that. Not only are these spaces indoor, but they have outdoor spaces here too. Just yes. like at the designer house, there's two outdoor spaces. People can go and enjoy and relax as well too, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then also the conveniency to all of the different places around here mm -hmm. in the downtown area. Why did you guys want to make sure you incorporate the convenient spaces so that people don't have to travel too far to mm -hmm. really enjoy a space like this here? That's exactly why, just to make it to where it's a safe, still, like we said, it's a family-friendly um, area, and we wanted to make that easy, you know, to 
go around the city. It's still in the central areas. You were able to commute uh, to different highways if you needed to, but we just wanted to keep it in a safe, nice area. I love it, and I love the fact that we can enjoy all of this here at the Designer House. We have a contest going on right now, Courtney Derrick, for our viewers to go and check it out themselves. They can go and relax in the master bedroom, which is what I'm about to do in just a bit, but we want you to make sure you intro now. We're going to announce that winner. You can get a two free night stay here at the Designer House. This entire space sleeps six different people, so we're going to go ahead and let you guys choose that viewer who is going to be taking part in the Designer House to make all of those beautiful content creations here for this entire weekend. Go ahead and send it on back to you guys in the studio. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my bubble. Oh, sounds good. We tried to match our outfits uh, <laughs> to yours and to the house, Joe. Thanks for that. And good luck to our viewers. Enter to win. Absolutely. Still ahead on Houston Life. After the break, in fact, it is time for us to spin our Houston Life price wheel. Wow. Is this on correctly? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, you could be our next big winner, and we still have that $1,000 that's on up for grabs as well. Houston Life will be right back. That was just a test. Well, it is Friday, and you know what that means. It is time for the Houston Life Prize Wheel. There's our music, where we spin for you to win some pretty cool prizes like Landry's gift cards, staycations in Uptown Houston and City Center. Even, Courtney, we've been trying to give it away $1,000. One of these days, it's going to happen. Today, we are spinning for Sylvia Pressas, who is joining us live via Zoom from the Humble area. Happy Friday, Sylvia. Thank you. Now, you're a grandma with seven kids. I understand your husband is a retired firefighter, and the two of you really enjoy heading to Vegas and like Charles to hit the casinos. Yes, we sure do. What's your, what's, oh, oh hello. Your, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love Thank it. <laughs> Wait, Sylvia, Thank what's your you. husband's name? <laughs> what's your husband's name? Oh, Edward. Edward, okay. And what's your favorite gambling uh, game of choice? Oh, slot machines. Slot machines, okay. 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 That's okay. a lot of fun. Same here. I go for the penny slots. It's really fun to just sit and play the slots. <laughs> I agree with you. We'll have to hook you up with my mom in Vegas for sure. Okay, so there's lots of prizes on the wheel that we're spinning for today. Sylvia, what do you have your eye on here? Oh, $1,000. Okay. $1,000. <laughs> well, in addition to $1,000, we do have stays Uptown Houston Hyatt Regency, Houston Galleria, gift cards to Landry's, of course, some NBC swag. So all kinds of great things you can win. You ready for this? Okay. Okay, Sylvia, we've got our fingers crossed for you and Edward. Courtney, do you want to do the honors? Do you want me to hold your microphone? Yeah, hold the mic. You know, like you in Vegas, you're supposed to blow on the dice. When you blow on my hand, I have to use the hand to spin. You didn't say touch it. You said blow on it. On your hand. Okay, here we go. Okay. Three, two, right. one. Here Big we go. money. Big money, Sylvia and Edward. You got this. You got this. Okay. Big money. Oh, excitement mounts. Oh, it's so close. Okay, listen, you got some NBC swag. It is good stuff, I promise. And again, nobody knows where this prize wheel is going to land. One of these days, we'll give the $1,000. But uh, Sylvia, we sure appreciate having you and Edward as viewers of Houston so Life. Congratulations. Can we see Edward one more time? He just needs to do the sneak in. There he is. Edward. Thank you. Y'all have a great weekend. Good luck in your next trip to the casinos. Stay dry out there. And if you would like your chance to spin and win live on our show, all you have to do is join our KPRC2 Insider Program. It's free to join. There's going to be great perks like discounts, giveaways, and so much more. Just head to click to Houston.com slash insider for your chance to win big with the Houston Life Prize Wheel. I don't know why we can't give away this $1,000. I know. Three I feel like it's my fault. Wheel. It's not. Maybe next time. After the break, a look at what's coming up on Monday's show. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up Monday on Houston Life, we will get a lesson on how to grow a delicious and fragrant herb garden from a local woman whose planting skills, get this, wowed even Martha Stewart herself. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. She's right here in Houston, and hopefully I can learn something from her. Yeah, and of course you can. I hope so. My green thumb is brown. <laughs> and we're looping you in on where you can go for a thrill ride in honor 
of National Roller Coaster Day. Really? You know, when I was younger, I mean, a long time ago, I was obsessed with roller coasters. Really? Can't stand them. Well, no, <laughs> really? No, I just get real nervous. I get real nervous, and then I just scream my head off. <laughs> the last time I went, I was not screaming my head off, but my vision kind of went away. What? That was the last time I ever rode on a roller coaster. Hey, a quick story. So during our last commercial break, <laughs> Courtney took her microphone off and her earpiece <laughs> and was about to go home. We had to remind her the show was not quite over. I, I think because I took off the feather boa and the hat, I was just removing things. A little anxious? What I, are your plans well, after I the show? I just thought, well, where are you going? Who we're you not seeing? done yet. We're not done yet. Seriously, where are hey, you headed? Happy Friday the 13th, National Prosecco Day. You're not answering my question. What? You have someplace to be? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, that does it for our show today. Can you believe 3.59 p.m. already? Here we go. It's Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. We're going to do it all again on Monday. We're going to toss it over now to Chris and Lauren at Studio A.